host this land, but we hold this land. And that's what we're here for today. We're here to hold the land, to hold it with our feet, to hold it with our hearts, and to know that what Enbridge is doing is wrong. They do not belong here. They should not be digging up highly contaminated soil. I want to mention something that Barbara brought up this morning. A letter from a Courtney Rains that you should have a copy of if you get our emails to the legislators. She's in the Department of Energy and Environment. And she said that the asbestos was of no concern to the state. So the state is not denying that the asbestos exists. They're just simply saying, we don't care. Oh. So our question is, to the laborers, to the police, to even to their private security details, but more importantly, to our residents, what's their concern going to be five years down the road? down with mesothelioma and they're wondering where the heck did I get that well we're going to tell you where the heck you got it you got it right there and the state just told you it's of no concern oh. so we're going to continue to fight on that issue and every issue the other day someone asked me well what is it that you want we want them to stop, pack up, go home, and leave us alone. We want them to realize that they are part of the problem and not part of the solution for climate change. We want them to turn around and become actual thinking, feeling human beings that understand the peril that they're putting every one of us, our children, our grandchildren in. That's what we want. I don't think we're going to get it. But that's okay because we're not going away. So I want to thank everyone who came down. I know there are people that came from all over the state to be here with us today. We are going to stay and hold the land. I believe we'll have a march over the bridge. All of this will be choreographed as we go along. But I want to bring up Professor Nathan Phillips. So a few of you might know Nathan. He's kind of famous. But Nathan undertook a two-week hunger strike in order to shame the DEP out of their inaction to tell them you need to dig, if you're gonna dig up this mess, you need to decontaminate the trucks the way you were supposed to from the beginning. They're still not doing that, by the way, okay? So they've just been lying all along. You need to test for asbestos, which they have not done. And you need to establish the air quality monitor, temporary and permanent, whatever it is you're going to do. So Nathan undertook a hunger strike, a two week hunger strike, and we got we got some pushback. We got some things going with the DEP. We got a meeting. We got Commissioner Suberg to say, oh, you're getting the air quality monitor. But they are still lying about the asbestos. They are still lying about the decontamination. They are still lying about the release abatement plan. So those things are still happening. So we need to keep pushing. But I'd like to have Nathan speak. And let's have a big hand for Nathan. Thank you, Alice. And I'm doing double duty here, so I'm live streaming you all while I'm giving a few remarks. So I'm here as a scientist who could not look the other way when I saw 
what was happening here years ago, five years into this battle, and I've learned so much that's broadened my knowledge from the advocates like Alice, like Margaret, like Wendy, like Andrea, like all the rest who have educated me on so many of the problems that have been here. And then the legal experts, Mike Hayden and others who in the, the air quality appeals that we were in, uh, opened my eyes to the injustice that our state, our governor, and our Department of Environmental Protection is perpetrating on the 3,100 kids that live in the blast zone and in harm's way, that they're actively putting in harm's way. So I'm a scientist, but I want to associate my comments with Perry Labrador. I'm a parent, and I care about the kids that our state is allowing to be poisoned by Enbridge. And I care about the kids that are in Nova Scotia, the gas of which, if it were coming through Weymouth, would poison the waters that they depend on. And so it's heartbreaking to watch what's going on in front of our very eyes here and to feel powerless. But when I see you all here, I feel power in our numbers. And I want to just say that we've seen that there's never any stage at which toxic infrastructure cannot be taken down. We saw it in Fall River just a year ago when $600 million cooling towers were imploded only four years after they were erected. So this compressor station, no matter what stage it's at, even if it gets no, built, we're not going away. We're going to shut it down. Say that with me. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. people behind them so when they're being photographed it looks like Thank you, we are who we are. And Nathan brings up something very very important that it's not just about Weymouth we're all Weymouth that this gas from Denton Texas to the waters of the Shubenacadie River, River in Nova Scotia is causing destruction everywhere it goes the pipelines the compressor stations and all of those things. So we need to hold that and know that we are all Weymouth. From Denton, Texas to Nova Scotia, we are all Weymouth. So I'd also like to bring up Council Becky Haw. Becky has been um, on the board of FRAX for five years and Becky has been, I always say she's a little bit like a dog with a bone. When it comes to research and all of the information that Becky has been able to supply and her ability to get the town council to pass resolutions and things like that has been absolutely fantastic. So Becky. Woohoo Becky! Thank you everyone for coming out today. Um, I've been a town councilor here in Weymouth for six years and for over five of those we've been battling this compressor station. I just want to quickly acknowledge a few other local officials. Brad Kroll from the Quincy City Council is here. Yeah!
everybody, thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, it's beautiful, it's windy, but it's, it's gorgeous seeing everybody out here. Um, we're going to be a little bit fluid today, you know. We're going to have a little marching, we're going to have some chanting. We have Mark here to do lead us in some chants, which is exciting. Um, but basically, I think the, the next step from here is to get ourselves all energized, maybe have a, a, a chant that we can start singing. Uh, we have the state police here joining us. Uh, okay, well, in any event, we're going to move over <laughs> with, our, with our energy and our, and our chanting and our flags and our puppets and everything. We're going to march over to our little free speech zone behind the barricades over there. Just gonna keep rallying there and then uh, for a little while we'll be over there and then I guess at some point we're gonna march on up to the bridge with our, with our signs and banners and everything like that. Um, no, no pressure but you know if, if, if uh, in, in the past folks have been able to uh, walk into the street kind of in mass you know and, and the police will issue those warnings you have to get out of the street you have to get out of the street they've let everybody who's walked into the street get out of the street so you know I'm not telling anyone to do this at all whatsoever but like you know I, I'm just saying if like a truck is coming and you know and like there was a whole bunch of people in the street the truck would have to stop um so I'm just saying I'm really not telling anyone to do that and I really like actually seriously don't want anyone to go beyond their own and really to put it out there across Turtle Island, across the world, that Weymouth is fighting in solidarity with all the other fights that are happening right now. You see the Wet'suwet'en and all the indigenous folks shutting down Canada completely. So, you know, Enbridge, they're the same shit. Canadian company trying to export gas off the Atlantic coast, you know, so we're all trying to shut it all down together. Um, but if you can, please donate to support this action and to support the, uh, the media efforts that we're, we're putting in. I mean, it, it all takes time and effort, and you know, we don't mind putting that in, but when it comes to money, you know, we can't, we can't just goodwill money. So um, I think there's a donation jar somewhere yeah. over there. So, you know, if, uh, if folks want to just make a donation, that would be great. Um, and, and, or if you can write a check or have a Venmo, find the other Kiki. The other Kiki has the Venmo and check information is over there. Okay, that's about it. Now.